Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be um, looking at the existence of uniqueness, like existence of a solution in square matrices. Um, and like, we're going to look at the dimension of matrices and vectors and all that. Yeah, so let's start off with a unique solution uh, type problem. So I decided to word this into a word problem just because I think like a lot of the upper level stuff in university, when you get to the upper level stuff, there's no word problem. So it's like you seemingly can't apply the stuff you learn. So I just thought I'd shape it up into the form of a word problem. So basically it says in this meal, you will consist a meal. Sorry, it was supposed to be in this question. In this question, you'll compose a meal consisting of avocado, cheese, and chips. Uh, one serving of avocado consists of two units of carbohydrates, two units of protein, and one unit of fat. One serving of cheese consists of uh, one unit of carbohydrates, two units of protein, and three units of fat. And one serving of chips can, um, contains three units of carbohydrates, one unit of protein, and zero units of fat. And what we're trying to find is how many servings of each type are needed for a meal of eight units of carbohydrates, seven units of protein, and five units of fat? So um, I'm just going to like write down the matrix, uh, and then I'll explain why. Um, so yeah, let, let's, so let's name our variables, I guess. Um, x1, let's, let's just say x1 would be our... Um, uh, or serving of uh, avocado. How many servings of avocado will we need in this meal? Uh, S-E-R. X2 would be um, how many servings of cheese do we need? So cheese, S-I-R. No, I'm just joking, S-E-R. And X3 would be the chips servings. All right, and the matrix for this, The matrix for this would be, um, let's see, let's see, uh, two, two, one, uh, two, two, one. Wait, sorry, let me think. Two, two, one. Sorry, I, I knew the last one was one, three, zero. I, I got that um, memorized. Um, don't memorize this in real life, guys. So I think it was uh, two, one, three. Yeah, two, one, three, two, two, one, and one, three, zero. Ugh, I'm sorry. Why did I write a two? Two, one, stay there. Three, two, two, one, and one, three, zero. And um, basically it's gonna be uh, eight, seven, and five. So this is X1, X2, and X3. And uh, before I go any further, I wanted to make a few observations. First of all, um, you can verify this for yourself, but the determinant of A is uh, not zero. So that means a unique solution does exist. And it also means that the vectors, these column vectors, 2, 2, 1, uh, 2, 1, 3, and a 310, these vector columns, a span, or you could say form a basis of R3. So that means you can choose any single vector in the three-dimensional space, and like you can make a linear combination of these three vectors, V1, V2, and V3, to form a vector. Like so, like these, so basically C1, C2, and C3 of these vectors will make the, uh, hit the B, which is eight, seven, five. And if you wanted to write this in the form of uh, AX plus AX equals B, then this is the form of, um, this A is two, one, the two, one, three, two, two, one, one, three, zero. Um, x1, x2, x3 is uh, 875.
Yeah. All right, so let's uh, get to solving this matrix. And erase everything except this part here. I don't want to erase the question because then I'll have to spend so much time rewriting it and I'm going to cry. So very careful. All right. So let's um, let's do it. We're going to turn this matrix, like reduce it down to row echelon form. The rule of thumb that I used, I, I got an A in this class. The rule of thumb I use is when you have a one with a unique solution, a matrix with a unique solution where the determinant is not zero, uh, reduce it down to row echelon form. Don't waste your time, especially when you're on exam. And when you are like, um, and when you are like um, doing it where there is no unique solution, then basically bring it down to row ech reduced row echelon form or RREF or short. So we're going to turn it down to a row echelon form here. Two, two, one, one, two, three, uh, three, one, zero. And um, let's uh, here. No, let's just, I meant to draw a line there. I don't know what I was doing. Eight, seven, five. Uh, why is it so sloppy? Okay, so then this is x1, x2, and x3. Uh, row echelon form. Um, I want a, I want my matrix A to look something like this, uh, or that's the idea. So it's like, here's how these lines that where I'm drawing a minus sign have values, non-zero values. And um, these are pivot columns where they, these values should be non-zero. And then these would all be zero, basically. And you can, you can also do it like uh, this, like row echelon form. Uh, my professor didn't say you, are allowed to we're allowed to do this but i found this was also okay this i guess works but just to be safe like i'm not sure do it like this okay this one is like eh, i'm not so sure about um yeah one um yeah okay uh one final note one final note, if your first value here, uh, A11, if your very first value in your first row vector is zero, inter swap the um, swap row one with row two or row three, basically. Okay, so let's get it down to row echelon form. R1 minus R2 goes to R2. And R1 minus 2R3 goes to R3. Remember, the goal is to get these two values to be zero. All right, so that's 2, 1, 3, 8. Um, this is zero, like we wanted it to. 1 minus 2 is negative 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. 8 minus 2. Um, yeah, zero. One minus two, yeah, negative five, uh, three, yeah, negative two, and um, yeah, now we want this negative five to be zero in R3. Okay, so R2, we write it like R2 minus, um, um, 5R2 minus R3 goes to R3. Okay. okay, so then you have 2, 1, 3, and then 8 here. You have a 0, um, negative 1, 2, and 1. And zero, um, so this is zero because negative five plus five is zero. And then five times two minus three, five times two minus three, that gives you seven. And five times one plus two is seven. 
Now we can stop here because it's very easy to solve from here. Uh, first part, seven X three is equal to seven. So that means X three is equal to one. I'm not gonna waste my time with ro reduced row echelon form because this system is very solvable at this point. Uh, negative X two plus two X three is one. Uh, X three is one, so negative X two is negative one. And X two is one. Okay, so now um, 2x1 plus x2 plus 3x3 is 8. And basically, so 1 plus 3 is 4. 2x1 plus, because remember, x2 and x3 are both 1, so that's 8. x1 is equal to 2. So the answer is um, we to construct the meal. We need uh, one serving of um, what was it? One serving of avocado. One serving of um, uh, what you call it? One serving of um, cheese. And two serving. Wait, sorry, it was two servings of avocado. I am very sorry, guys, because X one was avocado. Very sorry about that. Two servings of avocado, one serving of cheese, and one serving of chips. And there we go. That is the answer to the question. So let's, uh, let, let's now focus on a question that has a non-unique solution. The question obviously has to be different because I'm providing a new uh, dimension of uh, questions here. Okay, so consider a system of equations that looks like this. X1 plus X2. Oh, shoot, I was sorry, guys. Uh, that was really uh, consider something that looks like this, okay? Uh, X1 plus X2 minus 2X3 is equal to A. Um, 2x1 plus x3 is equal to b. I wrote it deliberately like this because it's easier to read. And x1 minus x2 plus 3x3 is c. And let's now um, form this matrix and system of equations. So it, lo it looks something like this. So X1 is here, X2 is there. Okay, so one, one, negative two gives you A. Uh, two, zero, one for B. And um, one, negative one, three for C. Okay, and then this was this is x1, x2, x3. Um, you can do this yourself. I already did it. The, first of all, I'm going to make some observations before I go for, forward. The determinant of A is, is zero. So it's like these uh, vectors are linearly independent. Lin depend, linearly dependent vectors. Meaning that at least one, one vector can be formed as a linear combination of two other vectors, basically. Um, another thing is like uh, basically the dimension that uh, the dimension of the um, 
of this matrix is two. Like the is two. And like basically we have three vectors here. Um what these column vectors one two one. One zero negative one. And a negative two one three. They don't form a basis for R3. They do not form a basis, so they don't span. And there's also one more thing. So it's like the dimension, or you can also say the rank is two. And there's like um, the dimension of the null space null is uh, one basically because by the rank nullity theorem uh rank plus the dimension of the null space gives you the number of row uh columns which is a uh, three so yeah and the dimension of the null space is one so it's like there's going to be one solvability condition and we'll see what that is in a sec All right, so let's get to um, breaking this matrix down. All right, so um, let's let's try to get it down to row echelon form. Um, like we did in the last question, but I expect to have one row of zeros since the rank is two. So basically it looks something like um, R1, 2R1 minus R2 is gonna go to R2. We want this and this value to be zero. Right? So, and also R1 minus R3 goes to R3. Um, yeah. So the first row stays the same, one, one, negative two. This is uh, A, um, two, so zero, um, two times one, that, that's two, and then two times that is negative five because two times negative two minus one is negative five, two A minus B. Okay, and R1 minus R3 goes to R3, one minus one is zero, one minus negative one is two, and that's also negative five as expected because one of these rows is linearly dependent. Um, and that is uh, A minus C. Now I want the, I'm gonna get the third row to be zeros. So we say R2 minus R3 goes to R3. Completely cancel out row three. Okay, so one, one, negative two, zero, two, negative five, zero, zero, zero. And that is A, um, 2A plus B, no, sorry, 2A minus B, A minus B plus C. So like before I go any further, this is not the final matrix. We haven't reduced it down completely, but like it's pretty obvious here. Like look at the last row, 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 is equal to A minus B plus C. Um, these are all zero coefficients here at the very last row. So A minus B plus C has to equal zero or you're gonna end up with a contradiction because it's like zero times something plus zero times something plus zero times something is gonna give you zero. It has to equal zero. So this is the solvability condition. All right, so let us carry on. So 
So we're going to assume the solvability condition holds. 1, 1, negative 2, 0, 2, negative 5, 0, 0, 0. And A, 2A minus B, A minus B plus C. Okay, and um, I want this value to be zero right here. So I, I can like my X3, cause like the, the dimension of the null space is one. So that also means we're gonna have one free variable. And I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna let X3 to be our free variable. So, and I want to express X1 purely in terms of X3. We express X2 purely in terms of X3. So let's do that right here. I'm going to say that, um, I'm going to let 2R1 minus R2 go to R1, because I want this value right here to be 0. So that is equal to 2, um, 0. 2 times negative 2 plus 5 is 1. You can choose to do it in a uh, row echelon form and not reduced row echelon form, but I'm going to tell you right now, it's going to be a pain in the neck. Okay, so A, um, no, wait, sorry. 2A, 2A minus 2A plus B, that's just B. Okay, okay. And then everything else stays the same. Negative five. 2a minus b and 0, 0, 0, a minus b plus c. Okay, and now, um, um, let's let x1, let's let these coefficients, the pivot columns, be equal to 1 to make it in reduced row echelon form. So let's just divide by row one and row two by two. So one, zero, one over two, zero, one, negative five over two, zero, zero, zero. And okay, so that would be B over two. Um, this is uh, A minus B over two. And this is still A minus B plus C. And lastly, this is the final form of the original matrix. And we can parametrize this. Um, so X3 is equal to T. That's the name of our parameter. X2 is equal to, I'm going to express it like this, A minus B over 2. Um, plus uh, 5 over 2t. And x1 is equal to b over 2 minus t over 2. And the solution looks something like this. So it look, we, have our, we have a particular solution. Um, bear in mind, if this was a homogeneous system where A, B, and C were equal to zero, then the particular so solution would always be zero, uh, where the determinant of the matrix is zero. So it's like, if this, if A and B and C were zero in this question, then the particular solution would be equal to zero. So now the particular solution, um, B over two, A minus B over two, and zero plus t um, negative one half um, negative one half five halves and one. But I'm I'm a fancy. I like to have the t parameterizations in whole numbers. So you don't have to do this, but I feel like doing it. B over two, a minus b over two zero. Um, plus uh, t negative one, I multiply by two, uh, five and two. And that's the answer. We have a particular solution and this place, this is a line 
that has like negative one, five, two. So you can move. T doesn't even have to be a whole number. T is any real number. And yeah, that is pretty much it um, for this question that doesn't have a unique solution. So that is all for today. Thank you very guys very much for watching. I love to stay, but for now, I got to jump. I'll see you guys on the other side of the bridge. Catch you next time.